Hey, nice aim. Glad you didn't miss. You know, if you're ever having trouble seeing straight from all the rum, just keep one eye closed. That's why pirates always have an eye patch handy. Okay, so where were we? Ah uh, yes, our Dom Fear Rain just got done wreaking havoc at the poor Salami Monastery, simply because they housed the talisman she sought. Its power is held inside her now, unless extracted by an obscure ritual. Conveniently, the old man that welcomed her into the monastery in the first place arrives fashionably late to the party and says, I suggest you follow me. Okay, now let's not even worry about Trogdor. He's only been our faithful talisman guard for half of a century. And then she says she means them no harm. Who's deciding the code of ethics for this movie? You mean the monastery no harm? You had to step over a pile of splattered brains just to get back upstairs. So there's no way you forgot about that incident already. But wait, there's more. There are three talismans now, all of a sudden. Each one uniquely immunizing the vamp from different weaknesses. The one she just absorbed eliminates her reactivity to holy water. The other two are for sunlight immunity and cross immunity. We learn Kagan already has one. As soon as they're done blabbering about it, the monastery is suddenly attacked by his minions. Mr. Nice Guy finds Rain and orders his men to kill her. But a minute later, he knocks her out and takes her captive instead. Why? Did he catch a glimpse of her eye? The movie fails to communicate that if he did. We see Vladimir and her look at each other from like 400 feet away and somehow he can see that her eye is blue now, so maybe that shit just radiates. <laughs> As Mr. Nice Guy is returning to the evil fortress with Rain captive, they seek shelter at a local dungeon to reduce their time exposed in the sun's deadly rays. If there weren't enough boobs in this scene already, just remember we're actually a pair short. Because this is Bob. It's too bad this is his only scene though. I was anticipating a more significant role by the way he was introduced. Like it was some big baddie we had to see. But just like the rest of this movie, we didn't. It reminds me of Zane's cameo. They just stuffed it in. It, they serve no purpose, yet somehow they're still the best part of this movie. Please continue. Anyways, Mr. Nice Guy needs a place to hide until nightfall and decides Bob's lair is the best choice. But when Bob notices Rain has the eye, he doesn't want to let her go. So he gets in a spat with Mr. Nice Guy. At this point, the vamp slayers have caught up and secretly infiltrated the lair by charging the front door and bulldozing their way through the feeding dungeon. A wise decision. Some guards try to stop them, but they get stabbed and no one cares. At least this time, there's a decent reason though. You see, everyone is so immersed in their own pleasure bubble that no one even notices the breach. Let that be a lesson to all you vamps out there. So we don't learn the hard way. Don't get breached. But great news. The good guys save rain right at the nick of time. Bob gets burned alive, and they all ride off into the sunlight. Don't worry, Rain's under a blankie, so the light can't sting her. And they all live happily ever, oh, I'm just kidding, we're only halfway through this masterpiece. <laughs> they take her to Brimstone HQ, which is where all the good guys live, and they lock her up because they don't trust her. And they're like, you're going to court for all the innocent lives you've taken. I'm just kidding, no one cares that she's a rampant murderer. <laughs> as soon as she gives them her two minute sob story, they just unshackle her. So, I guess she rolls high persuasion checks. There's a training montage with shitty haircut and rain. I think it's supposed to express a sexual tension growing between them, but the music is so unfitting. It's just that never ending typical B-movie background garbage that's been slowly sinking this ship. It totally misguides the mood. Barry White would have been a nice choice. <laughs> oh, the editing here. <laughs> Oh, I know. 
Literally, kids' movies are better edited than this. What the, the f After a long night of training, Rain decides to take a nappy poo and gets greeted by a nightmare. Naturally, it makes her horny. So she walks right over to Shitty Haircut, bangs him up against the jail cell, and then bangs him up against the jail cell. He put the bloopy dinker right up the Porka McStuffins. Right up the Porka McStuffins. Once again, we have this ominous generic background music that ruins what could have been an awesome sex scene. I just, I really wish this guy was Rufio. I don't wanna talk about it anymore. Just turn off the camera. Just turn it off. Just turn it off. After the two finish plugging, the vamp killing posse begins brainstorming for ideas to resolve Brimstone's food shortage. Ugh, just another random ass complication thrown into the script. Katarin doesn't like Rain, mainly because Vladimir is putting too much faith in her. He thinks she's the one. During mealtime, Katarin makes a snarky joke that maybe their savior could multiply their supplies. That was a Jesus joke, by the way. Can I see your teeth? <laughs> Doris. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ha ha ha, hilarious. She's a murderer. How many lives has she taken in order to progress her own journey, you know? How can you justify your personal revenge if there is even a single additional casualty? You've just become the very thing that uh, revenge should be exercised upon. That's philosophy 101. Like that old proverb goes, an eye for an eye is a mathematically inconsequential transaction. The posse decides on visiting the mainland to gather supplies, and wouldn't you know it, Kegel attacks Brimstone right after they've left. But it wasn't a coincidence. A wounded messenger stumbles ashore to warn them, and we learn that Katarin betrayed Brimstone and led the enemy to their secret location. You must choose. Bargain for freedom. Or leave your children motherless as a Brimstone martyr. Never! No! Why would you unsheath your sword just to let a dagger slowly stab you in the guts? If she had timed that a little better, we might have seen Katrin's head kerplunking into the water. Maybe she was just completely settled on the martyr option. She was just like, I've got two options. Slim pickings tonight, eh? Upon hearing the news, Rain blames herself for once and feels it's better to split from what's left of the posse to hopefully leave a lesser trail of death behind her. I'd say it's far too late for that at this point. The entire fortress was slaughtered already. Who's even left to kill? This is just a cheap drama device. She says goodbye to her lover as if she's never gonna see him again and then dramatically sails away. Uh, aren't they both going to the same place? She wants revenge for her mother. Uh, the vamp slayers want revenge for Brimstone. All of them are intending to hunt down Kegel. So why would now be the time to split up? They're gonna run into each other again in like five minutes. God! Using her extremely honed in mega Snoopy skills, she returns to Brimstone unnoticed to find Katrin retrieving one of the talismans. It had been buried underwater within the connecting caves by Katarin's grandfather. This was the thing her father wanted earlier in the movie. But just before she emerges with it, Rain intercepts her and they have a girl on girl pool fight. Katarin pulls her handy little dagger out and stabs Rain. But just before she climbs out with the talisman, Rain catches up and snaps her neck and then immediately feeds off her to repair her sexy wounded abdomen. With the two talismans now in possession, she's ready to confront Kegel. And just as expected, the Vamp Slayers are awaiting Rain's arrival at the Castle of the Count. Like I said, there was no reason to split up. She delivers herself to their door and requests to see Kegel, and in exchange, give them a talisman? So there goes the only upper hand she had. They lock her up in a very familiar looking cellar room. Her plan seems to be going so well, don't you think? She's got him just where she wants him. 
In preparation for the ceremony that is to come, Kegel orders the room to be cleared, so his entire battalion exits the scene. In the name of privacy, I guess. How practical for future battle that requires odds favoring the protagonist. After intense brainstorming for an entrance strategy, the rest of the posse decides the front door is the only way in, and so they're just gonna have to charge the front gate with swords and a couple grenades, the two of them, against the entire fortress. Remember, this movie costed $25 million. For some reason, the army is ordered to keep them alive, take them to the dungeon. Why? What good are these two randos? No one's coming for them. All of Brimstone is destroyed and pillaged. So what's the use in keeping them alive? Because our story needs them. Once inside the cellar, Vladimir tells Rain the ritual they're about to put her through in order to extract the talisman from her eye will likely kill her in the process. So she's really thankful for that information. The guards take her away and tie her to an altar where her friends remain in helpless captivity. You're not going to believe how they escape. <laughs> oh, you knew they were going to escape, right? F Did I just ruin it for you? I'm sorry. Well, cat's out of the bag. Vlad calls the guard over and says, My companion is gone. I don't know what has become of him. My companion is gone. I don't know what's become of him. Who even talks like that? <laughs> and the guard is just like, stand back, and opens the door, walks directly into the center, and gets an underbar kick to the chest. They make sure he's down with a swift kick to the solar plexus to ensure his incapacitation. <sighs> Can't believe that worked. Yeah, me neither. Is this a rated R movie intended for mature audience, or the Three Stooges? I can't tell anymore. So they battle their way up from the dungeon to the sanctuary and cowabunga down to the altar to save Rain right at the nick of time. While this scene is pretty cool and has lots of awesome blood spurting and stuff, it's hard to forget that Kegel's entire battalion is immediately behind the sanctuary doors. But we'll just, you know, ignore that. There's a plot twist here when Kegel opens the box that's supposed to have the third talisman in it, the one that makes a vampire immune to sunlight. But Rain tricked them all and absorbed it for herself. Apparently no one checked the box before accepting the transaction. They make it seem like a big deal, but it literally doesn't matter. They're all fighting indoors and at night too. So who cares if one of them is immune to sunlight? In this particular battle, it makes no difference. Vladimir gets restrained by a couple minions and watch this breathtaking performance. This is the end of Brimstone. Is this why Kegel wanted to keep them alive? So that he could say, this is the end of Brimstone, in that dastardly sinister tone. Kind of a risky gamble there, especially when your guards are always so unreliable. Gallons of blood later, every single person is basically dead, except Rain and Kegel. Shitty haircut's been mortally wounded and basically rendered useless. The two duke it out in real time, slow-mo, and or 10 frames per second. In the tussle, Kegel is about to extract her eye, but Shitty blasts open a bottle of holy water and Rain gets the upper hand. She stabs Kegel in the heart with an arrow and he rolls over to wither into some old ass beef jerky. Mmm. Rain hurries over to Shitty and begs him to allow her to bite slash convert him, but he refuses and says his time has come. Kegel is dead, and she hears his last heartbeat. Well, are you happy, Rain? All your friends are dead, villages have been ravaged, fortresses are in shambles, and Billy Zane is nowhere to be found. She finally realizes the damage she's been causing and takes a seat in Kegel's chair, unironically adopting his cold, emotionless expression. The end. Well, what do you say we rate the suck of this movie on my suckometer? What are the parameters? 
well, it's all a bit arbitrary really, but basically plot holes are one of the biggest suck inducing factors, while sex scenes are saving graces. Another one of the worst suckers are shitty jump scenes. A decent soundtrack redeems the entire movie though. I'm kind of pulling all this out of my ass. I'm gonna rate this movie a whopping six on the suckometer. Overall, this is a fun film and about as well made as you'd expect considering it was based off of a video game. I like sitting back with some rum and enjoying this campy classic from time to time. My favorite part's the rum. I scored this movie a 10 on IMDb because I realize I'm making fun of the film, but I don't want to be mean. I honestly enjoy watching it, despite the flaws. It's got its charm. If you want to watch the movie for yourself, I left a link. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope we see each other again soon. Sleep well, my friends. Don't forget to wake up. <laughs> oh, I drank too much again. Oh, I drank too much again. Oh, slept on the floor, soiled my drawers, and blamed it on the bed. Oh, I drank too much again. Oh, I drank too much again. Oh, I got in a rut, but then I forgot and blamed it on the bed. Oh, they threw me out the hall. Oh, they threw me out the hall. Got kind of silly and pulled up my willy, I blamed it on the rock. They threw me out the hall. They threw me out the hall. Got in a tussle, lost to the muscle, and blamed it on the rock. I drank too much again. I drank too much again.